I would prefer not to. Herman Melville, Bartleby the Scribner, A Tale of Wall Street. Hello and welcome back. Let's continue our journey with the valiant Hidalgo and his savvy squire. In chapter 34, the Duke and Duchess play more elaborate tricks on Sancho and Don Quixote. They take them on an afternoon hunting trip with political overtones, with a retinue of beaters and hunters that would rival those of a crowned king. The hunt tests our hero's bravery. Then, when the hunting party spends the night in the woods, the Duke and Duchess subject our heroes to another act of chivalric theater marked by the novel's third and final appearance of Dulcinea. The narrator tells us that these jokes, which manifest the inklings and appearances of adventures, are modeled by the nobles as extensions of the adventure of the cave of Montesinos, about which Don Quixote had already told them. This is odd because it was Sancho, not Don Quixote, who had informed them about what his master saw in the cave. The Duke and Duchess offer our heroes hunting outfits. Don Quixote refuses, but Sancho accepts a tunic made of fine green cloth. The narrator tells us that the squire does this for selfish reasons, intending to sell it at the first opportunity he could. Did you know the most famous illustrator of Don Quixote is Paul Gustave Doré? Note how Sancho's green outfit recalls that of the moderate Hidalgo Diego de Miranda, although the squire's greediness and cowardice are contrastive. Another interesting detail about the episode is that Sancho insists on taking his gray because he did not want to leave it even though they offered him a horse. Similarly, when the hunt starts, everyone dismounts except for Sancho. Sancho followed from behind the others without dismounting his gray, whom he would not leave unattended for fear that something might happen to him. Like a modern Diana, the Duchess plays a lead role in the hunt. She is the first to dismount and take up her position with a sharp javelin at the edge of the woods. The trackers and dogs chase an enormous wild boar out of the woods, which the hunting party kills. Again, the narrator stresses the Duchess's urge to hunt. She would have preceded all the others if her husband had not stopped her. In contrast, now Sancho actually does abandon his ass. Upon seeing the valiant animal, he abandoned his gray and ran as fast as he could. The squire gets hung up in an oak tree and has to be rescued by Don Quixote. Two important details here. First, Sancho rips his green tunic, which upsets him greatly. Second, his betrayal of his ass contrasts the fact that for its part, the animal does not abandon him. The original Arabic narrator finds this worthy of commentary. Sidi Amete claims that on very few occasions did he ever see Sancho Panza without his gray, or the gray without Sancho. Such was the amity and good faith that they cultivated between them. Quixotic mission. What color is Sancho's ass? A, khaki, B, black, C, gray. Correct answer, C, gray. Despite Cervantes' multi-directional ironies, the general tone here is anti-monarchical. The powerful boar, symbolic of a tyrant, for example, in Shakespeare's Richard III, is placed atop another of the novel's many beasts of burden, another supply mule, or acemila in Spanish, and carried back to camp as a sign of the spoils of victory. Similarly, when Sancho complains about his torn tunic, he cites a slanderous text that refers to a Visigothic king killed by a boar. Sancho then argues that hunting big game is too dangerous for princes, adding that the practice is unjust, for it involves killing an animal that has committed no crime at all. But the Duke defends hunting in political terms. The practice of hunting big game is more appropriate and necessary for kings and princes than any other. He even cites Xenophon, the classical originator of the idea. Hunting is an image of war. If hunting is a metaphor for war, then war against whom exactly? Sancho says he prefers playing cards. For his part, Don Quixote is annoyed by his squire's impertinence. Your graces should ignore this idiot, my lords, for he will grind your souls. 
That's all for now. Join me next time as we continue interpreting the most important literary masterpiece in the Spanish language. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here. Thank you.